This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hey guys and welcome back. Well, today we're going to do a subscriber request and today's video is going to be about how to model and texture a Vikings shield. Okay, so let's uh, check it out. Here we go. Okay guys, let's get started. So we're going to start with the uh, center of our shield and for that what we're going to do is we're going to take a uh, polygon sphere and uh, there you go. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in, we are going to uh, cut that in half. So we're going to switch views. Let's go up to this view. We're going to right click and go to face. Drag select and delete that. All right. Now, this is not going to be a low poly, so we don't have to be too concerned about that. If you want to uh, do a high poly, you need to uh, retopo that, obviously. I'm just going to select that outer edge right there hit Control e to extrude hit r to scale out like so and then hit g to repeat and w to pull down which will give us something like that and then we're going to right click and hit three to preview smooth and have a look and that's not bad at all all right now, I don't want this edge to be too hard here, but I will add one edge loop, maybe two. So we're gonna go to insert edge loop, option box, and make sure we're at single setting. Yeah, there we go. And let's see, we'll add one here, and we'll do one here and one here. Okay, Q on the keyboard, right click object mode, Let's go to Mesh and Smooth to actually smooth instead of a preview. All right. And we're gonna work on this piece by piece, all right? Now, we don't want this thing to be too clean. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click and go to Vertex. We're gonna hit B for Soft Select. We're gonna select an area here. Let's hold B and left click and drag to pull that back down. And we're just gonna select a number of um, Vertices, let's do that from our top view. So something like that. And we'll pull that view in as well. And we're just simply going to hit W and we're going to kind of deform that and kind of dent it, if you will. We don't want this to be too clean, if you know what I mean. Okay. And then we'll hold down B and bring back that impacted area a little bit just so we got some dents going on here. And let's just have a look here. Just gonna go to this guy and go to modify and center pivot. Okay, I'm gonna right click at a vertex once again. I guess that looks all right. Okay, cool. Now that needs to be mounted one way or the other. So what we'll do there is we'll uh, hit B to turn that off. Let's have a look here. We'll go in and we'll right click and go to edge. Double click on that edge. Control E to extrude. R to scale out like so. G to repeat once again, and W to push down, like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to mount a number of uh, rivets, I guess. I don't know what that's called. For that, we'll take a new polygon sphere. We'll just pull that out of the way here. We'll hit Control A for attribute editor. Go in and set the subdivision level to 8 by 8. Maybe even less. Let's do six by six. That looks kind of cool. And then we'll go in and we'll right click, go to face, drag, select half, delete that. We're going to take this guy. We're going to hit R to scale it down quite a bit. And then from our top view, we're going to go in, hit W to move that in. We're going to hit R to scale it down. F to zoom in, 4 for wireframe mode, hit W, bring that in to about there, 
Let's check our height for a minute. Have to zoom in for, for wireframe mode. That seems to be okay. So we're gonna go back to our top view. We are going to hit the insert key. We're gonna move our pivot point and we're gonna hold down X to snap it to the center of our grid, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit Control D to duplicate it. We're gonna hit E to rotate and hold down J to snap in sections of 15 degrees. And let's just look at the spacing. Two seems to be okay. Then hit Shift D as we go around. Shift D, Shift D, Shift D, Shift D, Shift D, and Shift D. So that should all be okay. I thought they were at the correct height. Apparently they're not. So let's just uh, select those and deselect this guy. And then we'll hit F to zoom in. W to move down. And that looks better. Okay, so that's what we got, all right? Cool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click at object mode, drag click all of this, go to mesh and uh, combine, and edit delete by type history. Okay, so that's part one. Now we need to have the outer rim for our shield. So for that, we'll take a uh, let me think, let me think. We will take a polygon pipe. We'll hit R, we'll scale that out. Push that down, obviously. And kind of look at the outer diameter. That seems to be about right, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in, in our attribute editor. Let's set that to 40 to make it nice and round. And then we'll go in to our radius, 0 0.5. Oops, it's not the right one. Hang on. That's not what I was looking at. Want to go back. We'll do it this way. We'll right click and go to edge, double click and shift double click. And then we'll hit R and we'll scale that out. Like so. And that will give it some height as well. And that's exactly what we want. We want it to be kind of thinner on the outside and higher on the inside. Maybe not that much. So we'll just bring that down a bit because it will flare up as we bend our shield. Then we're gonna right click the object mode. And we're gonna select that interface row and hit control delete, okay? Now, we kind of need to decide whether that is the good uh, diameter, and it looks like it is. So let's go to object mode, mesh and smooth. Let's see how that looks. Okay, we're gonna hit Control Z to undo that because it's a bit too smooth. And we don't want that. And there we go. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna go to insert edge loop, and let's see, we'll add an edge loop there, and we'll add one there, okay? Q on our keyboard, right click object mode, and go to mesh and smooth. All right, that's better. Now, again, here we want to tweak that surface a little bit. Um, we don't want it to be too clean. Although this is fairly small, so we can probably do that in Substance Painter. So we'll leave that alone for now. But the important part now is to bring in the boards, okay? And in our boards, we need to have uh, horizontal lines for our uh, planks, if you will. So what we need to do is we need to take a, a polygon cube, and then we're gonna hit R to scale that out, and W to push that down. And we're gonna create those basically manually. So we're gonna scale it up. As long as it's sitting inside the dimensions of our frame, we're good. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Edit Mesh, Injured Edge Loop Option Box, and we'll do multiple, and let's do three. And then we'll add three here. And we'll do three here, three here, three here, and three here. 
hit Q on our keyboard. We're going to right click and go to vertex. We're going to drag select that top row and shift drag select that bottom row. Hit R to bring that in until it's inside our frame. And you don't have to be freaky clean about that. As long as, as it's inside our frame, we're good. Okay. And we're going to kind of repeat that process. We will clean it up a little bit just because we don't want it to look sloppy. So we're just going to start by getting that in there. It shouldn't take too long. Let's just have a look here. I'm going to click object mode. All right. So you can see that there's a little bit of distortion, which is good because that is the way that works with our boards. I'm going to hit W to move this up for a sec. I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to create some definition in our planks, if you will. So on the second edge here, I'm going to select that one, skip a row, and just follow that along like so. Then we're going to go to edit mesh and uh, bevel. And we need to tweak that fraction. So let's do one which looks a little bit more realistic, I think. And then we're gonna go in and we're gonna right click and get a face. And we're gonna select these faces that are in the middle. Hang on guys, I'm distracted and that's never good. Come on. All right, looks like we're good. Hit five to go back. We're gonna hit Control E to extrude and W to pull down. Not too much. So let's have a closer look here. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, so that's our object here. Uh, I'm not quite there yet because like I said, we want to bend the sky a little bit. And in order for us to do that, we need to have uh, edges in the other direction as well. So we're gonna go into this view and we're gonna go back to insert edge loop, which should still be at three. And then we'll do a few here, 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 and here. And now we shouldn't have, oops, we shouldn't have any problem with that. All right, so it's time to uh, connect these guys. So this and this, actually let's push this one into position first. Hit W, push it down. And let's see. And I'm gonna have to eyeball that, so. I'm just gonna put a light on it. Create light and we'll do a directional light. Doesn't really matter that much. As long as I can see what's going on. So I'm gonna hit T on my keyboard so I can aim my light. And hit seven on your keyboard so you can actually see the light, all right? Hit W, move that down. Okay, there you go. <clears throat> All right, now we're not quite done yet. I'll just get rid of that light for a sec and hit six on the keyboard because it looks a little bit too plain, right? And we don't want that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a few uh, Viking symbols, if you will. And all in all, I'm not really happy with the thickness of this guy. So I'm just gonna hit R and kind of flare that up a little and hit W and bring that down again. 
that's kind of the consequence of doing that. Yep. So let's uh, see if we can create some kind of Viking symbol, right? So for that, I'll take a polygon cube and I'll just hit R to pull that out. W to move that down. And R to scale it some more. Then I'm going to go to uh, vertex, drag select these vertices, F to zoom in, and R to scale in until it's into a point right there. And we'll select that as well. Come on. And then we'll flatten that only in this direction, like so. And then we're going to go in to Insert Edge Loop. And that's still at three, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and I'll do three here, three here, three here, and three there. Q on our keyboard, right click object mode, and we're gonna bend this guy. So we've got this one selected. We're gonna go to deform, nonlinear, and bend. Our bend uh, handle is upward, so we're gonna hit E to rotate that, and hold down J to snap it like so. Then if we go into our bend handle, and that's the wrong direction. So hit Control Z to go back. Hold uh, J as we rotate down this direction. And just check whether we're okay. Yeah, it looks like, yep. So we're gonna go back to our handle and we're gonna drag it that way okay let's do 90 degrees okay and now let's see if we can turn this into a nice Viking symbol so we're gonna have a look from the top here we're gonna have to zoom in this is our guy seems to be okay so we're gonna go to edit delete by type and history so we can get rid of that curve there Hang on, looks like that didn't work. Let's try that again. Select our object, edit the lead by type history. Yeah, there we go. So that's gone. We're gonna go in, we're gonna bevel that edge first. So let's uh, right click at edge and double click and double click. So we got these two outer edges. Go to edit mesh and bevel. And it's just enough to break that line, which is good. And then we're gonna right click in object mode. We're gonna have a look from our top view. And let's see, we are going to... Okay guys, well, this is what I came up with. Um, it's not exactly a Viking symbol. It's more a creative, um, you know, approach, uh, but there are a lot of uh, references online and I'll put a link down below so you can uh, copy one of those if you like. I thought this was pretty cool. So this is what I'm going to go with. All right. So I'm going to go up to display and uh, show all. And just so you know, uh, this guy is just four copies of our uh, bent object. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this guy centered in the middle of our shield. So let's uh, hold down X to snap it to the grid. And let's move that in. So we can now hit R to scale that in and make sure it fits well within our shield. And let's make sure it's sitting on the correct height. So hit W to bring that down and we'll adjust the height of our center in a middle in a minute. Okay, let's try a, uh, a smooth here. Let's see what that will bring us and how that looks. Not unhappy with it, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna go to mesh and smooth. Then we're going to take our center section here. We're going to hit W to raise that up just slightly. 
So it's sitting on top. That's good. All right. And now that we have all of that, we're going to drag select the whole thing. We're going to go to mesh and combine. And then we're going to hit uh, B for soft select. We're going to go into our top view and we're going to right click and go to a vertex. Uh, let's drag select preferably a symmetrical piece here. That's pretty good. And now we're going to go to this view. We're going to hold down B and drag select until we pretty much have the outer dimensions of our shield. And then we're going to hit W and we're going to start to pull that up. And we kind of need to keep an eye on that angle there, but it looks okay. Let's not go crazy on that. Maybe a bit more. Okay, all right. So we're gonna hit B to turn that off. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna create a, uh, a rope that's gonna go all the way around. And uh, for that, we first need to design our clamps that will hold that wood. And for that, what we'll do is we'll take a polygon cube. We'll pull that out to about here. We'll hit F to zoom in. We'll right click go to face. Select that face, get rid of it, that one, and that one, which leaves us with this. We are going to right click at the edge, select that one and that one, and go to Edit Mesh and uh, Bevel. And that's a bit much. Let's see, let's do 0 0.5 maybe. Yeah, that's better. Okay. 0 0.5 and then we're going to go into insert edge loop option box multiple and we'll do two and we'll add them right there so we can now go in from the top hit f to zoom in right click at a vertex drag like these two in vertex mode come on let's try that again there we go and we're going to hit W and we're going to move that forward like that. All right. Not quite there yet. We need some thickness as well. But first, let's have a look. Looks OK. Control E to extrude. Let's do 0 0.1. It's a bit much. 0. Point, 0 0.05 maybe. That's a bit better. OK. So we're going to take that guy, we're going to hit W and we're going to move that in. And then we're going to have a look from this view. Have to zoom in. We're going to hit R and we're going to scale that guy down. And then we're going to hit R and stretch it from this point of view. Hit W, move that out. And hit R and scale that in until that is a fit. And then we're going to have a look and see if that works for us. And it does. Now the question is, do we need to smooth this guy or not? So let's give it a try. Um, we'll go to insert edge loop option box. Let's go to manual setting. And what we'll do here is we'll add an edge loop right there and right there and then we'll do one here and here and there and there q on a keyboard right click object mode and three to smooth still not there yet what we'll do is we will Go back in and one there and add one there and there and there. Come on. And this is a pretty important piece, so this should be good. Okay. Right click object mode, three to preview smooth, much better. Alright. 
So we're going to go to mesh and smooth to actually smooth. There we go. And then we need to copy that around. And so we're going to go to our top view. We're going to four for wireframe mode. And we're going to go and hit W so we can see our pivot right there. Hit the insert key, move the pivot point. Hit X to snap it to the center of our shield. So that's good. And then we're going to hit control, uh, hit insert first, then hit control D to duplicate, E to rotate, and hold down J as we do that. That's two steps. That's uh, good, I think. Let's see, maybe one more. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. We'll hit shift D and go around. Just keep on hitting shift D. That looks nice, which is good for us. All right. And then it's time to create our rope. Well, actually, not quite yet. We need to take this thing here. So we're going to go to actually, let's, let's just make a new one. We'll take a polygon sphere, hit W, pull that up, go to our attribute editor, set that to six by six subdivisions. We're going to go in, we're going to right click at a face, delete the bottom half. And then we're going to go to object mode. We're going to go to our top view. And we want to kind of um, have, um, what are they called? Bolts, rivets, whatever on here. So hit R to scale that down. F to zoom in. And that's about right. W to bring that down. And F to zoom in. Okay, so that's good. Now we need to copy that over, obviously. So um, that looks centered on that line. That's fine. We're going to do the same trick again. We're going to hit the insert key. We're going to move our pivot point. We're going to hold down X and snap it. Then Control D to duplicate, E to rotate, hold down J to snap it. Hit Shift D to go round, like so. That should be OK. And I'm just wondering whether we want that on the back as well. It would make more sense. So let's just drag select that. And then we're going to deselect our rope clamps, if you will. Okay, we're going to go to Mesh and Combine, Modify, Center Pivot. We're going to Control D to duplicate, hit W to push that down, E to rotate, hold down J until we're exactly at the flip side. Bring that back up, and that will probably need some manual adjustments maybe not we'll see let's have a look okay that's good all right all right time for our rope i'm just going to save the scene for a sec hang on okay that's done uh, so now it's time to create our rope uh, for that we're going to go to our top view and what we're going to do is we're going to start by creating a curve. So create, and let's go to, where do you go? Create curve tools, CV curve tool. All right. So we're going to start behind the top bracket, somewhere around here. And we're going to try to roughly have the same distance to our shield but try not to make the line too straight. After all, it's going to be a rope. Let's 
just keep on going. enter okay now we need to make sure that our rope is at the correct height so we're gonna have a look from this view hit four for wireframe mode and here you can see that it's perfectly centered so that's good and there we go and now we need to set up our twisted rope okay so for that we are going to take a uh, polygon cylinder we're gonna W we're gonna move that out we're going to go into our attribute editor. We're going to set caps to zero. Then we're going to go in, right click at our face, drag select everything except that top face. Right click at our object mode. Go to modify and center pivot. Jump to our top view, hit F to zoom in. We're going to hit control D to duplicate. Move that over like so. Select them both, control D to duplicate again, like so. Select all of them and go to mesh and combine, modify, center pivot. Okay, now it's supposed to go down here. It's way too big, obviously, so I have to zoom in. This is the start of our curve somewhere around here. We're gonna hit R. And we're going to start to scale this down big time. That's probably the right dimension. Then we'll go to this view and F to zoom in. We're going to hit E to rotate this and hold down J as we do that. So it will flip like that. And now let's hit W, push it down and hit F to zoom in again until we're at the start of our curve and hopefully we can see it okay. And that seems to be it. It's a bit hidden, so that's kind of tricky, but we're gonna right click at a face and we're gonna select these four faces. We're gonna shift select our curve and we're gonna hit control E to extrude. And let's drag on that thickness, okay? Okay guys, for whatever reason, I was tweaking the thickness and the thickness should just be zero. And that's why it went all weird, as you can see when I drag that up, okay? So we're gonna set the thickness to zero, perfectly to zero, okay? Uh, subdivision level is at 100 right now, which is okay. But now we need to get this to twist. So we're gonna hit that little checkered thing on the top there we're going to look for our twist value, which is right here. And that adds down to our menu right now. And let's drag that and see how far we need to go. It should be quite a high value. So let's do a thousand, not nearly enough. Let's do 5,000, getting closer. Uh, let's see, let's do That's too much, 2,000. Just trying to see if I can find the right value here. Let's try three, maybe one step up, four. That doesn't look too bad. Let's do a preview smooth. Nice, yeah, all right. So we're gonna do that. All right, we're gonna go up to mesh and smooth. And then we're gonna go to edit, delete by type history. Okay, so we got all of that. We're just gonna direct like everything, go to mesh and combine for a sec. 
And then we're gonna do handles on the back and then we are pretty much done with our shield, okay? So let's uh, move to the back here and I'm gonna create some leather straps and we'll do that with a, uh, a cube. So what we'll do is we'll just uh, hit W, we'll bring that up. We'll hit R and scale that out. Probably something like this, okay. Then we're gonna go to insert edge loop, option box. And we're, we'll do multiple and we'll do two, that's fine. And there we go. We can then hit Q on our keyboard, right click go to face. Select these faces, hit W and start to bring that up. And then right click at object mode, hit three to preview smooth. One to go back. Let's see, we'll go into insert edge loop again. We'll go to manual setting. And we'll put one around there and one around there. Q on our keyboard, right click a vertex. Go into this view and drag select those, hit W and push them down. And then we're gonna do that soft select thing again. First, fix that shape a little bit. Insert edge loop, we'll do one here. And one there. Q on our keyboard and three for preview smooth. Nice. We're gonna go to mesh and smooth to actually smooth. And then what we'll do is we'll take our shield, we'll hit E to flip it over, hold on J as we do that. Okay, we'll take the strap, hit W, move it down. Have to zoom in. Now we want two of those, and this one is slightly large, so we're gonna hit R, we're gonna scale it in a little, and maybe give it some thickness. Uh, height, I mean. So we're gonna hit W, we're gonna move that one over, and make sure it's sitting okay. Yeah. We're gonna hit Control D to duplicate, and let's move the other one over here and then have a look from this view. Yeah. And just to make sure, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold down X, we're gonna snap it to the center of the grid. Then I'm gonna snap it out again. And let's see, just looking at the values here. Sorry. Hold on X. Okay, that's at four. So that should be at minus four. And there we have a symmetry. Problem is they're just a little bit too far off. So I'm gonna hold X. Okay guys, looks like I'm gonna have to eyeball this. As long as it's not way off, it's okay. Yeah, we can do that, okay. So we're gonna need to uh, kind of bolt that down. So we're gonna take another sphere, and W to bring that up. We're gonna go in, we're gonna set subdivision level to six as we did before. We're gonna go in, right click at a face, delete the bottom faces, that's a bit too much. Delete, right click object mode, and let's get them onto these straps. So I have to zoom in. Let's move that over here. 
part the scale down. And we'll put that right there. Control D to duplicate that. And let's do one here. Select them both. Control D to duplicate. Pull them over. F to zoom in. Now let's just have a look. Okay, that needs some tweaking, obviously. So we'll take this one first. To zoom in, R to scale down. Take this guy and W, E to rotate somewhat, R to scale down, and W to pull up. And then I'll do the same at this end. Almost there. Okay, bring that back, bring that up. Rotate that little W to move up a little and R to scale it down slightly. Almost there. So we need to delete the history so we can get rid of that curve there. So uh, edit, delete by type history. Then we can take that curve and delete it. Let's have a look and see if everything is sitting okay. Looks like it is uh, good. Good. Uh, one thing we need to look at is the direction of our boards on the bottom here. So we're going to flip that over and we're going to do the similar thing at this end. So we're going to go to edge and I'm just going to have a look from, I just want to have that at the same position. Okay, so that's going to be that edge. That one. I just want to make sure it's skipping two every time, and it is. Hopefully you can see it okay. I'm just skipping two every time. Okay, we're gonna go to Edit Mesh and Bevel. Then we're gonna set the fraction to one. And we're gonna go in and we're gonna select those faces as before. on. I'll just uh, pause the video and do that. Okay, so I got those selected. As you can see, I'm going to hit 5 to go back to shaded mode and I'm going to hit Control E to extrude. Hit W to pull that down and we're just going to slightly push that down just so we get the same board effect at this end. Okay. So this is pretty much our shield, guys. Uh, I'm going to go back up to Mesh and uh, Combine. I'm going to go to Edit, Delete by Type, History, and Modify Freeze Transformations. And then what I'm going to do, which is not going to be part of this tutorial, is I'm going to UV this guy. And I'll be back with you guys once we are in the Substance Painter ready to texture this. Okay, so see you guys there.
Alright guys, now that I have my model UV'd, we can do a uh, color mask. Uh, I'll just uh, show you UV UV editor. So here's my UV. And what we're going to do next is we're going to go in and we are going to, uh, hang on, right click, we go to object mode and we're going to start to add um, materials. I'll just turn this off here, that's kind of annoying. Yeah, we'll add uh, different materials for different materials that we want in Substance Painter, okay? So this is obviously gonna be wood, so I'm gonna right click, assign new material, and we'll just do a Lambert, and it really doesn't matter what kind of color we give it, as long as it's a very distinctive color, okay? We got this steel outside element, and we got this as well. I want these two to be the same material. So I'm gonna assign a new material, do a new Lambert, and let's do a different color. Let's do slightly different material on these elements here. And there we go. So assign new material, Lambert, check a box, different color. We'll do our clamps. like so, right click, assign new material, Lambert, and let's do, I don't know, blue, whatever, it's fine. Then we have our rope, and we've got four pieces, assign new material, Lambert, come on, and let's do whatever, and then we've got our straps, Assign new material, Lambert. Let's do white, that's fine. And then we have all our nuts and bolts. And I'll uh, quickly select those, hang on. All right, so everything I have selected right now are our uh, rivets or bolts or whatever. We're gonna assign new material. Let's do a new Lambert. And let's do, I don't know, we'll do some type of in-between color it really doesn't matter that much okay we're gonna hit five and we have everything color coded okay so we're gonna right click the object mode we're gonna select everything we're gonna go to mesh and combine edit uh, come on edit delete by type history and modify and freeze transformation okay now we're ready to export our object. It's selected, so we're gonna go to File and uh, Export Selection, and uh, I'll save it in the correct folder. And I think I call this thing, yeah, Viking Shield, and we'll call it Shield underscore Color ID OBJ, okay? export selection and now we're going to jump into substance painter here we go hi right, guys so we're in substance painter we're going to start off by resetting our ui and so we're going to go to view and reset ui and so we're all on the same page here and then we're going to go up to file and new we're going to leave this at pbr metal rough and we're going to hit select so we can select our obj that we created and hit open okay now we can leave this at direct X, 1K map size, and we don't have any uh, pre-baked maps or anything, so we're just gonna hit okay, and bring our object in, okay? And let's see what that looks like. Let's give it a sec, and it doesn't look bad at all, cool. Now, just for this specific model, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my viewer settings, and I'm actually going to bring up the opacity for environment, and we're gonna turn down that blur because I want to see this pretty much at daylight, okay? Now, before we get started, we have to bake our default maps as usual. So uh, we're gonna go and, hang on, reset UI. We're gonna go to bake textures and I'm gonna leave everything selected at 1K. We don't have any um, high and low poly mesh, just a high poly. 
So we're going to leave that all alone and we're just going to hit the bake all textures. Now, as usual, that will create some error messages because we just hit bake all, uh, but that's fine. We'll give this a sec. All right, there we go. Um, yeah, it looks okay. A little bit of artifact going on there on these elements, but we're not going to see that because of the textures that we're going to apply. And you can see that our maps have been baked here, right? Now, let's start off by applying some steel for this guy in the middle. So what we're going to do is we're going to first identify which layer that is. And by clicking these off, you can see that's the one in the middle, which is that outer edge and that thing. OK, so I'm going to turn off all the others. And let's see. Yeah, that's that guy. And where's the other one? Right there. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, materials. Let's see whether we're going to use a um, regular uh, steel or a, uh, let's see, a smart material. This is steel rough. Let's give that one a try. Make sure we're on the right layer here. And let's bring that in. We'll give that a sec. Um, turns out OK. It's nice and dark. It's a bit shiny, though. So with that selected, let's uh, tweak the roughness. And by bringing up that value, it's uh, making it slightly less shiny, if you will. A little bit is OK, but not too much. Yeah, that looks kind of fine. And let's see, is that what we're OK with? Yes, it is. All right. So um, just to be absolutely sure, what I want to try is uh, a different steel material on the second part. And that's going to be our wood. We're going to take that part, turn that off. Let's go with a smart material on that one. And let's see what kind of steel we'll get. And if that looks a lot better, then we'll go with that. Let's see, steel dark and stained, gunmetal, uh, rusty steel. That's probably pretty cool. Let's make sure we've got the right layer selected. And we'll pull that one in. Let's just have that big onto our material. Let's have a look here. Um, we're going to make this quite rough. It doesn't look that cool, actually. Let's get rid of that. Let's see what kind of options. We're going to go with the steel that we just had before. So let's do the regular material. We'll do the steel. And Let's see, we've got a steel rust here as well. Let's try that. Nope, not that one. We'll do the same one we had before. And let's make that quite rough. Okay. A little bit darker. That's too dark. That's a bit better. And just go a little bit back in the roughness. We want some reflection. Let's see what happens if we make it really reflective. It's a bit spotty, which is nice. OK. So yeah, we got that. The top one is our wood. We're going to deal with that later. We're going to go down. We're going to go to this guy. These are our brackets. And for that, what we can do is use, uh, let's do painted steel on that one. OK, and then we'll go in and we'll change that blue color and push that towards black. Pretty much. And then we'll increase the rust level. Yeah, just to break that surface a little bit. OK, cool. So what's next? Uh, we got our rope now for our rope. We're going to use burlap. Now, I think it's under under smart material, probably. And it seems to be. All right. So we got that layer selected. Just make sure we're going to turn that stuff off. OK. And let's bring that in. 
and let's open that. Let's see. We'll tweak the height details. We'll make it a bit rougher, which is okay. Let's see, and not too much to do there. We can tweak our base color and make it slightly darker if we wish, which I guess is kind of appropriate. Yeah, that's better, okay. So we got that, we're gonna turn that on, that on, that on. Let's see, we need to deal with our leather straps. Um, that's this right here. So let's see what we got. Leather, let's try this one. Looks okay. Then we have all our nuts and bolts. Let's use steel on that. Oop, make sure we got the right layer. Let's use this guy. He's working on it. Yeah, and then let's deal with our wood. And you can see that at the top part's quite shiny. The wood should have a huge effect on the overall uh, model. So let's just uh, see what we can do there. I'm gonna turn off all the other layers. So, we just have our wood left, select that. We're gonna select wood. And let's see whether we do a smart material or not. Let's try that. Let's go with a wood material and let's see what we got here. That looks like a fabric. That's pretty cool. So we'll bring that in. We'll have a look and see what that's like. Not bad. Uh, let's turn on the rest of our stuff. Looks like we've got one missing. Okay. And let's see whether we need to tweak that or not. I actually uh, like it. Let's see what we got here and what we can play with. So we got uh, dirt levels. Uh, let's see. Just trying to tweak that. Not too crazy on that. Just a little. Let's check the wood veins here. Yeah, nice. Wood fibers, just want to make it nice and rough. And our base wood, we can decide to tweak that color. Yeah, we'll go back. I thought the lighter one was better. Okay. So let's have a look at our model here. So these are leather straps. This is our shield. And that is basically it, guys. I think it turned out okay. It's not perfect uh, by any means, but uh, it's a good exercise. I uh, kind of like it, so hopefully you guys like it too. And uh, that said, thank you guys for watching my video, and see you guys next time. Bye.